I've made this high quality microphone for only $20, but the commercial one costs like $500. So how come? Well, you see, both my homemade version and the $500 microphone are using the same capsule, which is like the heart of the microphone. So I was able to buy the same capsule that the $500 microphone is using for only $13. So all I have to do is the rest, like making the PCB for the amplifier, design the shape of the microphone with 3D files, and also pass the audio data using a USB connection, and I've made myself a super high quality microphone for only 20 bucks. Actually, the quality has some small problems, which I will talk about at the end of the video, but anyway, this should cost you like 20 times less than the commercial one. You have everything that you need below in the description to make the same project, the 3 files, the PCB files, the schematic and so on for free on electronoops.com. That being said, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. The project for today is great. It involves a cool PCB for the amplifier which you could download from below, a high quality microphone capsule, an analog to digital audio converter and a 3D design. And this is the capsule that I will use for today, the JLI 2555, and is the same capsule used in this microphone that costs around $500. And this will be later connected to the PCB that I've ordered for the amplifier because the audio signals from the capsule are very low as you can see just a few millivolts. So guys, here I have the capsule with just a JFET connected to the output, as in this schematic here, and then I have a simple audio wire connected to my PC. And here's how it sounds. One, two, three, one, two, three, microphone test, microphone test. This is a test, as you can see, <laughs> the quality is not that good and the volume is low. So. A lot of noise, very low volume, only one channel because I've only connected one cable and in general a very bad quality. That's why we need a shield, we need a preamp, we need an amplifier and a lot more steps. So let's see that. Before we even start I have to mention that this project was made by DIY Perks and he made a super high quality video on this topic. It was so good that I had to try it myself as well. So please check DIY Perks channel for support. For this project you will need obviously the microphone capsule, the preamplifier transistor and the amplifier PCB, an ADC or analog to digital converter module for audio and my 3D design together with some small components such as screws, elastic bands, ball screws, metal meshes and the passive components for the amplifier. The full part list is below and the total price is around $20. So let's start assembling the amplifier PCB first, so we can have it ready later when we assemble everything. So download my Gerber files from below for free. Then you go to PCBWay.com and click the code now button. As always we add the settings as for the PCB size, the amount and the color. In my case I want the PCB to be red. Now save to cart and on the next page upload the Gerber files. You make the payment and just in a few days receive the awesome PCBs for the amplifier. They look very nice, so now we could assemble it. The component list is quite specific and you need to use very good quality capacitors. So make sure that you get some non-polarized audio capacitors like these ones. They are a little bit more expensive, but we really need them. One key component is this one here, because this component when supplied with 5 volts it will generate 15 volts, but also negative 15 volts, and we need that to amplify both sides of the sound wave. Another crucial component is the audio amplifier, and this one has a very low noise input and a great amplification, and this will increase the sound from the capsule to line level. So connect all the components and check the final schematic for all the values. And just like that, now I have the PCB all assembled. Finally, we need to pass the audio to a PC, and for that we'll need to use an ADC module. I have this one which is very cheap, but has a very good sound quality. So take the PCB out, and then solder the 4 USB wires to these pins for the 5 volts, 
ground, D plus and D minus. And on the other side we take the left and the right channel and connect it to the plus pads here on the PCB. And then the ground wires to the negative pad. And now the amplification and the ADC is ready. Now we need to prepare the capsule. The JLI 2555 is a permanent polarized capsule and that's great for our project. And if you use any other different membrane, the process should be the same. Because the output of such a capsule is very low, we need to first pre-amplify the signal. And we do that with a simple transistor. The middle pin of the capsule would be our signal. And the other pin would be, let's say, the ground connection. But the signal is coming out on both pins, because this is an analog signal. We need to connect our transistor like this to the capsule. Now the transistor that I will be using has 4 legs instead of 3, as we usually have. But we don't need the fourth one, so we can simply remove it, so it won't create any confusion. This pin here on top will help us know which leg is what pin, so we know that we have the gate, the source and the drain like this, so we need to remove the C pin. Now I solder the gate to the middle pin of the capsule. The closer the transistor is to the capsule is the better, in order to reduce the noise. So now we have the capsule with the other two legs, the drain and the source. So step 1 is done. Step 2 is to add the wiring. Now as mentioned by Matt from DIY Perks, adding a stiff audio wires to the capsule is the worst scenario, because any vibration would be transferred to the capsule through the wire. So we need to use wires as thin as possible and reduce the weight. For that we could use very thin enameled copper wire, and because it's enameled it's already insulated. I have all sorts of wires diameters, but Matt had another great idea, and that was to use thin wires from this kind of DC motors. Or maybe from some old crystal clocks, or for example, in my case, from this transformer. It's very thin and insulated, so let's use this. And to lower the electrical interface, we should cover the wires in a metal shield. The commercial audio wires are wrapped into some thin foil or copper meshes, but that will be too heavy. I first wanted to use this kind of wires that is used with thermocouples, but it's a bit too heavy. So we could use this. This is solder wick, but believe it or not, the copper is waved with a hole in the middle, just like a tube. So I use a metal wire and open it up. I take two thin wires and glue them to the metal wire and pass it backwards. And now we have our noise cover which has such a low mass that it won't create any vibration. We send the enamel from the tips of the thin wires and solder them to the two pins of the transistor from the capsule. We also solder the copper insulation to the external pin of the capsule, which is the ground tap. Check with a multimeter and see if you have a good connection and also maybe mark the negative side with a marker for example. And just like that, the step 2 is also complete. Now for the step 3 is to enclose the capsule. To avoid interference and noise, all microphones will have a metal mesh around them, as you can see here on this microphone. As you can see right now the microphone is without the back mesh and as you can see, look how much noise we have. Actually, I can even change the noise with my hand. And now let me just add the mesh to the microphone but make sure that it is in touch with the other mesh and with the copper braid. As you can see, I have no more noise. You can hear my voice, you can see the signal from my voice, but no noise. Hello, hello. That's the noise from my voice, but not the noise from the environment. So that's why this mesh is so important. I bought a few types of meshes and I've decided to go with this one of 0.8mm holes, because I like better this color than the brass one. To give it shape, I measure the diameter of the capsule and make a hole into a wood board. I cut some of the metal mesh and then, using a hammer and a wood cylinder, I give the mesh the shape of the capsule. And we need two of them because it will go around the entire capsule. And now download and 3D print my design from below. It's based on this type of microphone and later I want to tell you why I want it like that. My design has a main case the outer ring and the small ring. 
and in my case I want to paint them with silver, but that is up to you. So I use some spray paint and give a few layers to the rings. And now that the paint is dry, first we take the small ring. So take the part and first we add one of those metal meshes. Make sure that it has a small hole, so the copper wires from the capsule could pass. Now add the capsule and pass the wire. Carefully add some epoxy all around. And before the epoxy is hard, add the other side of the metal mesh, and make sure that they are connected. Both sides of the metal mesh and the copper braid of the wire must be in contact to act as a shield. Now let the epoxy to dry, and we've got our microphone capsule ready. Also as you can see this 3D printed part has these three holes. I cut some metal wire to size and place those into these holes. And we need this for the elastic ribbon later. Now take the outer ring and those elastic ribbons. I could have designed this with some springs, but I've bought these rubber o-rings. So make a knot and start passing it from here. You pass it through the small ring capsule, then back to the outer ring and so on, till you reach the last hole, and here you make another knot. You should end up with something like this. The capsule suspended in the middle, to avoid vibration from the rest of the microphone, thanks to the elastic ribbon. On the bottom of the outer ring, I add one of these insertion nuts. I use my soldering iron to heat it up and insert it. And now I take this ball screw that cost me only $1 from AliExpress. And I added this ring to the ball screw and now we could adjust the angle. Now take the 3D printed case and add insertion nuts inside, for the 4 holes. Then you add the ball screw in place and tighten it. Pass the wire from the capsule inside of the case. Cut some more metal mesh and add it all around on the interior walls of the case. We need to make a Faraday case to avoid the electrical noise from the exterior. Add the metal mesh to the lid as well and make sure to add an insulator between the metal mesh and the PCB. Now take the amplifier PCB with the ADC module. Connect the wires from the capsule to the 3 pins for G, plus and minus where the G is the ground, so connect it to the copper braid insulation. Make sure that the USB Type-C connector could be reached through the hole in the case, and then screw the PCB in place. And now that the PCB is in place, we use some small screws like these ones, and close the case and the microphone is ready. Finally! So guys, I have the circuit here with the capsule, and I know that I have a lot of noise right now because I don't have the case, but anyway, I had a problem with the IC, actually it doesn't work. And I've also found a bunch of blogs and forums on the internet around the same schematic from DIY Perks, and no one knows why the circuit does, doesn't work, simply doesn't work. So I had to change the IC and now I'm using the INA217 and it works. But now the volume is way too high, let me just show you. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, this is a test for the microphone, and as you can see the distance from the microphone is huge, and even so the sound is very strong. Actually, yesterday I was making some tests and my cat was right there on the table and I was able to hear my cat breathing. It's incredible, I can even hear sounds from, my, from, the, from the street. So I have to reuse the amplification because even with gain zero, the sound is way too high. So you will see that once I will change the resistance and I will lower the voltage, the sound will get a lot better. You could add this microphone to a microphone arm with yet another vibration holder but because my design already has the capsule suspended in mid-air, and it is so small that basically creates no vibration, the sound from the table should not pass to the capsule. So guys, it's time for a test, so use a USB Type-C cable and connect it to your PC, and let's check it out. Ok guys, this will be the final test of this DIY microphone, but I have to say I'm not satisfied. Compared with the quality of Matt from DIY Perks, this is not even close, and I have two main problems for that, and in just a moment I'll explain you everything about that, but let's just hear the test. So here it is. One, two, three, one, two, three, this is a test microphone, this is a test for the microphone, and as you can see, we have noise. And the second problem is clipping, if I get too close to the microphone, the voice gets a little better, but sometimes you have clipping, because the IC will get saturated, and I'll explain you that in just a moment. So we have two main problems, noise, 
all the time as you can see we have a hiss noise over my voice and then we have clipping. So how's that? Well, I think that the main problem is the IC. As I've told you, I wasn't able to use the THAT 1512 because it simply doesn't work. I found three forums talking about the same circuit from DIY Perks and everybody talked that the IC simply doesn't work. And I think that in my case, I bought a clone one from AliExpress. That's why I've ordered once again from DigiKey this time and I hope this will be original and it will work. So I was forced to use the INA217 and I think that this has a lot more noise. And trust me, I've made a lot of tests and this is not noise from the ambient. Because I made some tests with a different metal case, I've placed everything inside here. So there was no way that uh, the noise from outside, the magnet fields from my home will get inside. So trust me, this, this is not a problem. I've also tested a different PCB with different capacitors, different resistors for the amplifications. And the noise is still there. I've even bought a different ADC and this has the same uh, input noise. I've also bought some different JFATs, different resistors. These are different. The noise is still there and also different capsule. So that's why I think that the noise is coming from the IC because the INA217 has more uh, input noise. It's not as good as the THAT and that, that's why I want to make this project once again, but this time fixing the problem with the IC and make sure that it works. So I will get rid of that noise. And the second problem is the voltage. You see, this is made to work with minus plus minus 15 volts and that I think is too much for this capsule when it's going to the amplifier. So if the amplifier re uh, receives too much voltage, it will just saturate. So that's why we get that clipping sound when I get close to the microphone. The voice at this distance is a lot better because the amplification gets better. Uh, but when you get over 15 volts, I mean over 10 volts maybe, the IC will get saturated. So I, I want to make the same project once again, but this time using plus minus 5 volts or maybe plus minus 10 volts. And then we'll have the third problem, which is not that important. But when I'm using this ADC that I bought from, one is from uh, Amazon and the other one is from AliExpress. They are both good, they have good quality, so that's not a problem, but when you connect this to your PC, usually with a normal microphone, in this case I'm using this microphone here to record my voice, this cost me like $200 8 years back, so this is semi-professional, and by the way, the quality of my DIY micro microphone is pretty close to this one, if sometimes even better, actually parts of this video were recorded using this microphone, just to show you. So the problem is that with this ADC, when you go into the sound configuration and go to levels, if you change this bar here for the level, it doesn't work. If you let it to 100, it's the same as leaving it at 0%. Also, some other microphones have here a bar for noise cancellation, for noise cancellation, but this one doesn't have it. So this level doesn't simply doesn't work. So the level from the, the ADC is just directly connected to your PC and you can control that. But that's it. This is the quality of my microphone. I'll try to improve it in the next version and maybe get close to the version of Matt from DIY Perks because that quality of the sound is awesome. Now you could get a lot better voice. Let me just show you now how this sound would be if I applying some filters. So this is once again, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is a microphone test, but now using filters. So now, as you can see, the voice is a lot better. We get rid of that noise, but you don't want that. You want to get the pure sound from your microphone without using any filter. So that's it. If you still want to make this project, you have all the schematics, the parts that I've used for my own circuit because I've changed it a little bit below. Also the 3D files for the enclosure and for the PCB if you want to order the same PCB. Everything is below for free on electrums.com. And that's it. Thank you very much. So guys, that was my version of the DIY Perks high quality microphone. And I wish I had an expensive microphone to compare it with but my budget is not high enough. But if you want to support my work, check my Patreon page below, also my PayPal, my website, and all the links that you need for this project for free. The PCB design, the schematic, the part list and the 3D files for the case, all below in the description. Thanks again and see you later guys. So guys, did you like this video? I hope so. Ok, so look, I would really like to thank you to all of you for the support especially for those who are supporting me on Patreon because that's a really nice thing to do. And if you can't support me on Patreon, well, all you can do is to just like my videos or comment below in order to get more activity on YouTube. That will really help me. And if not, you have all my links below for my shop, for my website, if you want to buy my t-shirts and so on. So thanks again and see you in the next video.